Yeah. So thank you for that. I am not going to spend a lot of time talking. Uh, in the past, I've said a few things, I've shared a few thoughts, um, but I've been told by our new events coordinator, we've got to get rolling. So I'm going to say yes, ma'am. I'm going to open with a word of prayer, and then we'll get started with our program this morning. Now, before I pray, if you wouldn't mind, and I know we're out here in the middle of nowhere, but there is a chance your cell phone might get reception for a split second. And so if you wouldn't mind just taking a second and silencing that, that way we won't have inter inter any interference with our mics and our video recording that we're doing, all right? And then I would also like to say, please feel free to jump up or stand up if you don't feel like jumping, all right? And uh, move around to get pictures. All right, that will be just fine, and uh, and that way you can enjoy these moments with your grandchildren. All right, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Lord, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for sending your Son to the cross that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you for servants like John and Donna Bloom that gave their life to this ministry. Lord, for one purpose, and that's to train children in the nurture and admonition of you, Lord. Yes, we want to give them the book knowledge, and we do a great job of that, Lord, by your strength and your help. But Lord, helping these young people to understand who you are and what you did for them and how that that can change their life for eternity. So we thank you for that. Thank you for all the many hands that have come along these past 40 years and helped here at Presta, and been involved, and taught, and volunteered. We are just so blessed. And then this morning, we're just blessed to have over 130 grandparents here with us to enjoy this special day. And Lord, I pray that they will feel special. They will feel loved today as they get to see the, the product of what their grandchildren, uh, they're learning here at Presta. And so I just pray that you bless them in a special way. Lord, give them strength. I know we have grandparents that are, or maybe their, their health is not great. But Lord, we thank you that they're able to be right here with us today and enjoying this moment. And then, Lord, I also want to offer up a prayer of, of, uh, of thanksgiving for the grandparents that couldn't be here because they live so far away. We just ask that uh, we're able to catch all this on video so that we can send them a copy and they can enjoy this day even though they can't be here. So, Lord, we give our warning to you. We thank you for it, and we pray that you would be honored through everything that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Choir, and we are doing two pieces for you this morning. Um, the first one is Nothing But the Blood of Jesus, and we would love for you to join in on the last chorus. You may know that hymn. And we have two soloists that are featured. We have Noah Phillips and Eleanor Lambert. And the second song that we're going to sing is Who Will Be a Witness? Thank you. 
our fall play. You will see an ad for this in the back of your program. This is primarily high school students. It's a 1940s, it was written in the 1940s, and it's very, very funny if you need a, a night out and you just want to laugh, you need to try to make this show. So it's primarily high school students. The performance that you will be seeing now is from our junior high program. This is with the help from, a, from three of our high school speech team members. But you will be seeing this. This will be performing as a dinner theater on the first Friday in, ninth, in 2017. Can you believe it? <laughs> 2017, the first Friday, the students you see performing here this morning will be doing their dinner theater performance. It's called The Orphan Train. It is based upon historical um, events that happened at the turn of the 19th century. And um, where 250,000 children were transferred from New York City streets to families in the Midwest. So you will be hearing from one of the orphans today, but if you come to our dinner theater, you'll get to hear all nine stories. So I present to you The Orphan Train by Iran Harris.
I sit up straight and look at me. And hear what I have to say. These are things you are to do and to know while you're under my roof. First, I ain't adopting you. This ain't your home, it's mine. You are like a hired girl that's living in. I'll feed you, clothe you, send you up to school, and pay for your essential things. But I don't believe in foolishness or wasting money. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Second, you in turn will help me around the house and keep me busy. It gets lonely living here all by myself. Yes, ma'am. You go to church and say your prayers every night. Yes, ma'am. Be grateful that you're out of the dirty city, out here where there's fresh air and sunshine, and you've got a roof over your head. You have lots to be thankful for, miss. Yes, ma'am. Okay, first we'll get dinner. Get some wood for the stove. <coughs> Well, don't just stand there. Move. Where, where is the wood pile? Uh, out the back door by the shed. I hurried to the wood pile. Got an arm over. I hurried back. But some fell off before I got <coughs> to the stove. Now look what you've done, stupid girl. You spilled, you messed up the floor. Sweep it up. I swept it up. Later, when I was carrying a bucket full of water from the pump in the air, I spilled some on the rug on the back porch. Now look what you've done. Awkward, stupid girl. Go hang it up so it will dry. Yes, ma'am. I tried to please her, but everything I did was wrong. Now I want you to go out to the cellar and get a crock of milk. And don't spill it. Cellar? I have never even heard of a cellar. What is a cellar? It's a cave dug in the ground where you keep things cool. Stupid, stupid girl. See out there by the privy? Yes, ma'am. That mound of dirt, there's a door even with the ground. I want you to open it. Go down the stairs into the little room, the cellar. On the floor is a crock of milk. Pick it up and bring it carefully up the steps. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. And don't spill it. I bring it to the cellar, lift it up the cellar door, and start down the stone steps. In the little room at the bottom was a number of crock of milk sitting on the floor. Something scurried across my foot and disappeared into the corner. Ah! It was a mouse! I picked up the crock of milk, held it tight, and started up the steps. And on the steps was another mouse. I closed my eyes and screamed and spilled the milk all over me on the floor. Now look what you've done. Great heavens, you spilled all the milk! Stupid, stupid girl. You can stay down there in the cellar where you spilled the milk. Teach you a lesson. Not to be so wasteful, <coughs> so clumsy. There, you're locked in. You can stay down there tonight. There'll be no supper for you. Stupid girl. I'm sorry I took you in. I don't want you. I sat there on the cold steps, alone, in the dark, thinking. Thinking nobody wants me. Nobody. When morning came, I heard voices up. You locked her in the cellar all night? It was the right punishment where the crime was committed. It was Mr. Williams who'd come to check on the homes where the orphans were. I'll let her out now. I hope she learned her lesson. Mary, are you all right? I don't want her. Yes, Mrs. Honeybee. Poor child, she's shaking. She's going to be all right, Mary. She's going to be all right. Murphy's going to be at church on Sunday, but they want a girl, a young, pretty girl like you. Helen Murphy and her high, flute ways, and him always telling jokes that they'll spoil her. We will see. I'm sorry she didn't work out for you. I'm sorry you scared the poor child to death. I did the right thing. She learned a lesson. Get your things, Mary. I don't have anything. Well, that's all right. I'll take you to the Murphy's. Goodbye, Miss Honey. I hope you have a pleasant day. <sighs> The Murphys lived in a big, beautiful house. Mrs. Murphy was beautiful and wore pretty clothes. A store if did laugh a lot and told funny jokes. And they did spoil me. My own room, all blue with ruffles, and the closet full of dogs. <coughs> Friends and parties and a little dog on my own. It was like coming to the end of the rainbow when there was a wonderful home. And they didn't call me Rebecca. They, they called me Mary. They're like a princess. And I <laughs> The 
concerned with unwanted children, seeking, searching for a home. We are part of the history of our country. Some did, some did not. There was a train of hopes, a box of dreams, a train of pleas, take me. On the road of the orphan train, the orphan train. I rode the orphan train, the orphan train. Thank <laughs> you. 